Hey. You're up early. Oh, I couldn't sleep. I'm too tense. Mm. Why don't you come back to bed? I'll relax you. Hmm? It wouldn't be good company. Ah. Still, uh, worried about what's gonna happen at the station with Ross gone, huh? Yeah. Well, when Alex brought Roger crashing down, I never thought he'd land in my life. It makes me so angry. It scares me. Hey. Don't have to worry so much. Things are different now. I'm here for you, and I promise you, I am not going to let anybody hurt you. Especially Roger. Not again. The key to my comeback gaining control of WSPR. That'll be my power base. It'll also be the perfect way to get even with Holly for trying to turn my son against me. The woman just never learns. Okay, you lost a minute here, so we gotta pick up a... Harry, what's our calendar like? I wanna go up to Jonathan wait, Barrow with both guns. Oh, oh, oh. What happened at dinner? Is the girl Barry's plan? I'm sure she was. I got her to admit that she wasn't a reporter. I'm surprised Barry would uh, try to set you up with such an obvious phony. So was I. I mean, you should have heard some of the questions this girl asked. Did you find out her real name? Nope. But I know she's staying at the Grand Hotel, and that's where I'm gonna nail her. Welcome to New York, Miss Spaulding. Thank you. Uh, would you have my luggage sent to my suite and make sure the maid hangs up all my clothes immediately? Yes, Miss Spaulding. Anything for you. And uh, is there someplace nearby where I can have breakfast? Our restaurant, Cafe Grand, is across the lobby. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> Opus, Melinda. Remember what you're doing here. Surprises, so. so we decided to surprise oh, you. Oh, well, this is certainly a pleasant one. I don't know how many more surprises I can take on it. <laughs> you better get up and get to work. It's more important than ever that you keep your eyes and ears open for me. I've got a meeting this morning with a financial broker. I'm telling you, Ross's departure from WSPR changes everything. Surprised me as much as he did Holly. Gotta hand it to him. I'm not sure I like the idea of a DA who loathes me quite as much as Ross does. Which is what makes control of the station that much more important. Gotta get my hands on his 25% before Holly does. And then she'll have no choice but to stand by and watch me call the shots. I'll let her stay on as manager of the station. She's good at that, but it'll be my power base. I wonder why fate keeps making Holly and me cross paths. Oh, well, one thing's for sure. We're gonna have to resolve our relationship, and very soon... Gene Wetherill. Interesting the way St. John reacted when he heard her name. I wonder if what she writes about him is true. Well, we'll find out later. It's not important now. 
gaining control of WSPR and Holly. That's what's important. Sorry. For what? Well, I feel partly responsible for the situation down at the oh, station. Oh, why? Because if you hadn't gotten so wrapped up in my project, none of this ever would have Oh, happened. stop. Don't blame yourself. I believe in you and your project. Well, I knew what I was getting into. Besides, I like what I ended up with. What are you talking about? You don't have anything. I got you. That beats a syndicated TV show, doesn't it? Oh, really? <laughs> well, that's nice. But still, I feel responsible. Oh. Which is why I've come to a decision. I'm not waiting for Alan Michael to get back to me. I'm going to go see him today, and I'm going to force him to, to tell me whether or not the foundation can come up with the funding for the rest of my life. No, but Daniel, I... I, I... Please, let's not argue about this. I've made up my mind. Yeah, I got in pretty late. Where were you? If you don't mind my asking. I was at Alan Michaels. I was helping him with something. Don't get excited. Well, I gather you two are getting along pretty well. Yeah, I thought so too, until Miss Amelia Earhart arrived at the penthouse. Oh. Is he seeing somebody? I don't want to talk about it. You know, Blake, I think the best thing would be if you would just forget about Alan Michael and Spaulding and come work at the station with me. Mother, we've had this conversation before and my answer is still no. I'm not going to work at some podunk television station after working with the majors at Spaulding. But you lost your job and Alex will never take you back. We'll see. What does that mean? Sooner or later she's got to step down and when she does, Alan Michael moves in with me at his side. Oh, honey. You don't know that for sure. I know how much Ellen Michael needs me, and I'm going to be there for him, despite Alexandra or any little Pop-Tart that comes along. Who is she? Stephanie. And she showed up late last night at the penthouse for late supper. And that's all I'm going to let it be. Darling, do you need to be reminded that you and Alan Michael are divorced? And whoever he's seeing, it's none of your business. Isn't it time to wake up, lover boy? Oh, he's getting dressed. Oh, there's a switch. That's enough. <gasps> Perfect! What? I just found a way to get Alan Michael's mind back on me and business. Oh, it's beautiful. I'm sorry I couldn't make the ceremony. No, we tried calling your hotel room. You're just never there. <clears throat> I'm so sorry we couldn't wait for you. No, I couldn't wait any longer to do right by Nadine. Daddy, it's okay, really. And you thought she wouldn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, isn't he the sweetest thing? And you should have heard the speech he made at the ceremony. Just thinking about it makes me want to cry. It was so beautiful. I meant every word of it. I'm really happy for both of you. Okay, Mindy. <laughs> What's wrong? What is it? Oh, Daddy, uh... Remember that surprise that I, I, I mentioned earlier? Yeah, what about? I saw this guy who, who looked exactly like someone I knew once. He's gone now, but, but the similarity was so incredible that I honestly... I know thought... exactly what you mean. Do you know I ran into a guy at the racetrack once who used to be an old army buddy of Frank Sr.'s? And, well, I know it wasn't him because he's doing time right now, but I swear his own mother probably couldn't tell him apart. Yeah, I doubt... Nick's mother could tell them apart either. Good morning. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Right this way. Please. Thank you. Oh, this is too perfect. Are you sure it's wise to press Alan Michael for an answer? Uh, considering the setbacks the documentaries caused you, I think that it's the least I can do. Well, thank you for wanting to help. Unfortunately, it's just not enough. I need a guardian angel to descend from above and help me buy up Ross's share. Yeah? Well, if things go right, you could be looking at him. If I can get Alan Michael to continue funding the project, you're going to be able to sell the documentary, and a coup like that has got to attract investors, right? You are an angel. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we need... 
sorry. But, uh, this is important. If you're here to tell me your picture's in the paper, I already saw it. They've asked me to take over at the DA's office as soon as possible. I have to sell my shares in the station immediately. Right now? Don't do this to me. Look, I don't have any choice. They can't have the DA owning part of the media. It's a conflict of interest. Ross, come on. you got to give me more time. Holly, it's okay. This is not a problem. I'm not going to let you down. At least there's one man I can count on. Can you help me with my dress? Sure. Um, yeah. How do these things work? Oh, yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> No rush. You don't have any flights today, and I don't have my meeting until lunch. I say we sleep in. <laughs> you're not capable of sleeping in, and you know it. Okay, okay. Uh, how about we go to the country club? Then we have a swim at breakfast, and then we can come back here for a nap. Mm, sounds good to me. Okay. Uh, you realize I'm doing this under duress? <laughs> I can't wait until my... <laughs> My cleaning lady. My cleaning lady must have forgotten her key. Blake. May I come in? It's really not a good time. Hello, Stephanie? Blake. I wouldn't come by so early if it weren't important. Sanders met with Omnibus. They're our biggest competitors. I know, and if he does business with Omnibus, it will be at the expense of Spalding. Blake, we cannot let this happen. I know. I think I have a way to stop it, but I have to look at his file first. All right, it's right over here on the table. Line and gone, man. This is uh, a you're talking about. Uh, what do you look oh, like? What a... Hey, Alex, <laughs> oh, what a great surprise. I just had to come over and say hello. <laughs> well, we would be honored if you would join us. Why don't you take my seat? Well, thank you, Nadine. What, what brings you to New York City? Same thing as you, I expect. The oil lease auctions. Billy, I thought this was supposed to be our honeymoon trip. Well, I've got to earn a little money to keep you dressed in style. Oh, yeah. and what style? Your clothes make such a statement. Why, thank you. Do you know that Mindy designed this for me? Ah, yes. Springfield's most famous up-and-coming designer. Mm. Are you here on business, too, or did you just want to get away from it? Well, I came to see the spring showing. You must have been here for a while. I've missed seeing you in Springfield. Oh, I know what you mean. Everybody's been so busy, it's been impossible to keep up. Well, if you join us for breakfast, we can keep up right now. Daddy, I'm sure Alexandra's I'd awesome. love Thanks. to, Billy. Great. So, I've been mm -hmm. meaning to call you and bring you up to date on everything that's been happening. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to get... Ooh. Oh, honey, you've seen one of those. You've seen them all. Stay here with us. I insist. Yeah, Alexander's right. Besides, you haven't even had your breakfast yet. <laughs> yes, you need to keep up your strength. You don't want to wind up back in the hospital. Oh, where are my manners? Congratulations on renewing your wedding vows. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you know, I would have sent you an invitation, but I, I know. You thought because Lewis Oil and Spalding are competitors, I'd decline. Well... Nonsense. I think we should be able to socialize. After all, our families have shared so much over the years, haven't we, Mindy? I guess so. Well, of course we have. Nadine used to date Alan. <laughs> I was engaged to H.B. You were married to Philip. I think that... There, I know there's another connection. It's right on the tip of my tongue. Uh, oh, Mindy. Is it that mysterious man you were going to tell us about? What? A mystery man? Oh, Mindy, tell us who he is. Just follow this, we'll take you right there. New York Grand Hotel. 
Hey, Carl, it's Nick McHenry. How you doing? Fine. What can I do for you? Listen, I have a key here to one of your rooms, and I was hoping you can give me the name of the beautiful blonde that goes with it. What's the number? Uh, 741. Her name is Mindy Lewis. Mindy Lewis. And Jonathan Barry's picking up the tab, right? Uh, no. It's going to her. Thanks, Carl. I owe you one. Any reads on the girl yet? Yeah, but not the one I was looking for. What do you mean? She may not be on Barry's payroll after all. Then who is she? I don't know. But I'm gonna find out. Well, where are you going? I'm gonna go check on some leads at the hotel on Barry. Well, isn't that the same one she's staying in? You a genius, Harry. There's no telling who I might run into there. If he decides to sever ties with Spaulding, I lose my power base to land the presidency. I know, Dad. That's why I'm here. I think I can help you out with this. Good work, Blake. We need to talk. Can't you see we're busy? I'm busy to help your mom. What do you want, St. John? Answers. I'm a little tired of you not answering my calls. I've been very busy. Well, it doesn't take that much trouble to uh, pick up the phone, right? Look, the last time I saw you at the Blue Moon, you said that the uh, project was in limbo. It still is. This is not good enough for me. I need a definite answer. Are you or are you not going to continue to fund the project? At this point, there is no more money. I don't know when there will be. There's, there's no more funds, maybe for months. Fine. I'll simply take my research someplace else to another foundation that honors its commitment. Oh, uh, you can't do that. You watch me. If I were you, I'd read the fine print in your contract because you signed an exclusivity clause that I had added. We own you and your research. Holly's not going to be able to sell the documentary if this thing is on hold. Well, that's Holly's problem, not yours. I was definitely wrong to give you the benefit of the doubt, Blake. You are most certainly your father's daughter. Thanks for seeing me on such short notice, Mr. Webb. It's my pleasure, Mr. Thorpe. Please have a seat. Thank you. You understand my urgency. I have to arrange financing quickly to buy Ross Mahler shares of WSPR before my ex-wife beats me to it. Given your name and reputation, I doubt there'll be any problem getting you the funds you need. Good. I intend to turn that station into a real moneymaker. Not that Ms. Lindsay hasn't done an excellent job managing the station. She has. But, well, she doesn't have a knack for commercial programming. A case in point, would you ever knowingly sit down to watch a documentary on neuro-robotics? Neuro what? That's my point exactly. See, people want to be entertained. They don't want to be put to sleep. I agree. But you have to admit, Ms. Lindsay has built up WSPR's reputation as a serious station. Now, frankly, Mr. Webb, in my book, respectability runs a distant second to profitability. I understand, Mr. Thorpe. And to expedite matters, I've already put in calls to several potential backers here in town and in the capital. I expect to be hearing from the representative any time now. Oh. Excuse me. Sure. Webb here. Jarvis, I was expecting your call. Your people can't wait to get in on a sure thing, can they? Uh-huh. But... Uh-huh. I see. What's wrong? I don't know what to say. No one wants to lend you a cent. If they read my proposal, they stand to make a fortune. But the proposal's not the problem. Jarvis said his people were all for it until your name came up. I don't understand this at all. I do. It's Alexandra. She's obviously determined to get revenge. She intends to destroy me. And anyone who ever heard her. Aren't you going to tell us who this mystery man is? 
Oh, honey, you must. <laughs> What's his name? Um, <laughs> you know, uh, he has got to be a hunk to catch Mindy's eye. Oh, I'm sure he is. Mindy's always been so fussy about the man she's dated, hadn't he, dear? His name doesn't matter. He's not who I thought he was anyway. True with so many men, I'm afraid. Present company excluded, of course. That's all right, Alexander. I just want my princess to find a good man and settle down. Daddy, please. Oh, your father's only concerned about your happiness and well-being. Doesn't she bring you, her bows home for your approval? No, no, not as much as I like. Mindy, you should. I know your father's interested in whom you date. Oh, we both are. But you know, since I have been her stepmother, she hasn't brought one person home for us to meet. Ah! You know, honey, if, if you're having trouble catching a man, I'm sure Alex and I can oh. give you some great pointers for the true expert. <laughs> oh, Alex, I'm sorry I forgot about your marriage. It's all right. I'm trying to do precisely the same thing. Besides, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Roger's name was bound to come up sooner or later. Well, as long as the cat's out of the bag, I don't mind saying that, Alexander. I can't understand what you saw in that man. I mean, he's a devil in a pinstripe suit. He's just no down, dirty, rotten, no good. Yes, I, I understand, Billy. I'm just thankful no children were involved. I, oh, I really shouldn't go on like this. I know you would never let Mindy have anything to do with a man like Roger. My princess was Roger all over my dead body. Billy, I, I wasn't going to bring this up, but perhaps I should. There's something Roger did, something you should know about. Okay? Oh, I'm fine. What Daniel said. It didn't upset you, did it? Why should it? I've always known that I'm more like my father than I am my mother. I'm not surprised someone should just point it out. You know, I was... I always wanted people to think that I was like my father. You're very much like your father. <laughs> Blake, when you knew Alan, what was he like? You can say it. You mean when I had an affair with him? Yeah, when you had an affair with him. Well, when I found him in Mexico, he was down and out. But even in that condition, you could see his strength. You knew this man would not be down for long. And you helped him get back on his feet? I was just there. He helped himself. <laughs> you ought to give yourself a lot of credit. <laughs> Don't believe that. I give myself a lot of credit. I always have. Made it sound like you had to. No one else did. Come on, Blake. What about your mother? Don't talk to me about my mother. I grew up with Holly. Oh, don't tell me. You probably think she's the perfect mother, right? No, I don't think that anybody's perfect, but uh, Holly seemed to really care about it. Caring's about a lot more than Holly even understands. Believe me, it, it doesn't bother me. I got used to it a long time ago. Hey, do you want to sign this check before you leave? Yeah, sure. There you go. Oh. What about your father? What about him? Well, it must feel good to have at least one family member that you're close to. Right. Blake, I want you to talk to me. What's this interrogation about? Why don't we just get this work done, okay? No, no, I have to know. This affects me. What do you have to know? I want to know why you're doing all this, huh? I told you. No, not really. You said that you wanted to help me so that maybe you can get back into Spalding. Okay, I buy that. What I don't get is why. I'm ambitious, just no. like you no, are. Blake, Blake. Look, I see it in your eyes. You're a lot hungrier than you've ever been. And it has a lot more to do with than just losing your job. You changed. <laughs> How? You're asking me? What happened? I have changed. My whole life has changed. My dad sold me out. Look, I know that you're upset about Roger. 
No, I'm not upset. I mean, I was, but I just finally realized that I can't count on him. I'm on my own now. And that's why you're so driven? Well, you can call it whatever you want. I call it survival. You know, I always believed that no matter what happened, no matter how bad things got, even if I was the one that messed up, my father, my father would always rescue me. My dad would just always be there to save me. No matter what the problem was, no matter where I was. <laughs> but guess what I just found out? It ain't gonna happen. I mean, he can say all the right things to me, just the way Holly always has. But when he swoops down to save someone again, I know who he's saving. And it isn't me. It's heart. And that's why I'm taking care of myself now. <laughs> Don't look at me that way. It's really no big deal. I really am sorry to barge in like this. Uh, the DA's office sent these over, and I thought Mr. Marler would want to sign them right away. Well, please, come on in. Ross will be relieved at the interruption, I'm sure. Suzanne, thank you for tracking me down. How did you find me here? I just checked your service. Oh, that's right. I did check it. Sorry. I think you've come all this way for nothing. There's no hurry to sign any of these. Oh, I'm sorry. They, they looked important. I had no idea. I'll sign them anyway. Then we pretend that you didn't waste a trip. I... Really, I'm sorry to have intruded. It's clear that I came at a bad time. Why should you care? Ross doesn't. He can't get out of WSPR fast enough. Look, Holly, an opportunity presented itself. I took it. I am not abandoning you. Yes, you are. You're running away from Roger. I can't believe I ever thought you'd persevere and protect me. I'm sorry that you feel that way. There you go. I think if you were smart, you'd sell your part of the station, too. I mean, life is short. Let somebody else fight with Roger, all right? You know how much that station means to me. I can't walk away from it. I won't. Look, if you stay, and you'll be doing it with your eyes open, you'll be working with him on a daily basis, all by yourself. Holly, uh, excuse me. Can I speak to him more, please, in private? Yes, of course. So make two copies of those. Send the original to the mayor. Okay. I can't believe Alan Michael cut off the funding. Yep. And it may not start up for several months again. I threatened to walk, but it appears I have this ironclad contract thanks to Blake. I am so sorry. Well, forget about it. It's you I'm worried about now. Well, I know you tried, and I appreciate it more than you know. But now I just gotta come up with some big money. Right. Okay, I'm thinking about that on the way over. You have to be in a position to fight Roger as his equal, right? Not with my 25%. So we get you 50%. And I don't have the money to buy Roth's shares. Maybe you don't. But I can get it. I take a loan out against my future earnings. You would do that for me? No, thanks. So what is it that Roger Thorpe did that I don't know about? Billy. The truth is, Roger played some dirty games with Lewis Oil while he was president of Spalding. He stole a number of your old clients. I want you to know my company will play by the rules from now on. Can I quote you on that? I'm not saying we won't be aggressive in buying for Lewis's business, but it will be done honestly and above board. Well, that's nice to hear. It's about time. Really? <laughs> now, the truth is, I thought you and I might be able to do some business from time to time. I'd like nothing more. Let's start by keeping the lines of communication open between our companies. You never know when I might want to tell you something on a moment's notice. I feel the same way. I'm going to give you my personal card, which has a reach me anytime number on it. You feel free to use it whenever you want. Thank you, Billy. I will. Okay. Honey, if we're going to get those theater tickets for tonight, we better get going. Right. If you'll excuse us, ladies. I have to be going as well. Oh, don't go. 
Keep me company while I finish breakfast. There's still so much we haven't talked about. Okay, well, we're gonna be off. <laughs> and I'll stop by and pay the bill. Thanks, sir. You're welcome. Alexandra, stop playing this game with me. If you're gonna tell my father about Roger, then just do it. Go ahead and get it over with. Perhaps you're right. Billy? You know, I really do wish that we had the money to go ahead with Daniel's project. Not only would he be helping people, it'd be great PR. I'm all for charity, but it starts at home. When you're president of Spalding, you can call all the shots. Yeah, guess you're right. If our plan's gonna work, we're gonna have to take this one step at a time. I'd start with changing that tie. What is wrong with my tie? I happen to like it. Oh, I know. So do I. But your lunch date is not going to like it. Dwyer just went through a very messy divorce. And his ex-wife's favorite color is red. Oh. Good thinking. I'll go change it. Blake. Thanks a lot. I don't know what I'd do without you. sure you never find out. Alan Michael, why don't you try that green tie with the, the maroon things on it? Okay, got it. This is a little <gasps> I don't believe it. Why, what's the matter? Harley was arrested for prostitution. What? Well, that's impossible. I don't believe this. <gasps> I gotta go to the... No, 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 Alan Michael, don't. What, are you serious? Yes, I mean, there just must have been a mix-up. They must have switched names, and I'm sure it's just all settled now. Yeah, well, maybe, Blake, but I think I should go check on... Alan Michael, set. after your meeting with Dwyer, this is too important. <gasps> Blake, look, can't we reschedule it? Alan Michael, you can do whatever you want, but from a PR point of view, that's a really bad move. How would it look if you went down to the jail only to find Harley safe and sound at home laughing about the whole thing? The press would have a field day. Yeah, you're right, you're right. You're right. I'll give her a call later. Alan Michael, you're going to make it to the top. Just let me do what I do best. Okay. It's Roger Thorpe again. 
I know you're upset about what happened, but there's nothing else I can do. No, but there is. Look, I want you to set up appointments for me with some New York banks. I'm sure once they see my proposal, I will get the backing I need. I don't know. Uh, Ms. Spaulding obviously has considerable influence, and she's determined that she you're not... She doesn't control every bank in the world. Now, I'm going to give you the names of some New York bankers who don't happen to do business with Spaulding. Uh, there's Osgood at First New York, Lunt at State Savings, and Hamilton at Empire Federal. You set up those appointments for me, and I'll take care of the rest. All right? Ah, didn't expect you back so soon. Things didn't go exactly as I'd planned, but I'm not giving up yet. I'll get the financing I need to buy Marler's share of WSPR way before Holly ever gets around to it. I wouldn't count on that. Please don't do it. Alexander, did I uh, forget something? No, I just wanted to make sure you'll be back for the lease auctions. Oh, I wouldn't miss you counting me being there. Good, I'll see you then. Right. Bye. You have no one to blame but yourself. You planned this, didn't you? You accusing me of deception. <laughs> I know it's a stretch for you. But the truth is, I had no idea you or your father would be here. You are the last person I want to see. But since our paths have crossed, now is as good a time as any to lay the ground rules for our future relationship. First of Why all... Why didn't you tell my father about Roger? You could have. You're lucky I was in a good mood. So you're going to stop playing these games with me now? Just don't abuse your reprieve. Alexandra, there's something I want to tell you. You're not going to believe it, but I met a man who... Shut up. Just shut up. I don't want to hear about your love life. It's not... I, I have known you since you were a teenager. You were always close to Philip and Beth. I never once did anything to hurt you. And how did you repay me? By sleeping with my husband. There was more to... Shut up. Don't ever tell me anything again. Just stay away from me and my family. And if I ever think you're meddling in my affairs, if you even look at me the wrong way, I'll tell your father his little princess is nothing more than Roger Thorpe's slut. Fine. Have it your way. I was told that Mindy Lewis is here. Right over there, sir. Can you really come up with this much money? Well, uh, I've got some in the bank, and I think that I should be able to borrow the rest on, uh, uh, projected career income. And you'd do that? Yeah, of course I would. Besides, uh, seems like a good investment. You think he could get this kind of a loan? He's a doctor. It's been done before. Well, I pay you back every cent. You bet you will. All right, I don't have the loan yet. Let me call the bank and get the ball rolling. Is this a good idea? Why not? I know what it's like to be caught in the crossfire between you and Roger. It's not pleasant. I'd hate to see Daniel get ambushed in the same way. Well, he doesn't seem to mind standing up to Roger. <sighs> what? I don't want to get involved in your personal life. But one way to destroy what you have with Daniel is to pit him against Roger. Mm. Okay, now, what's going on with Holly? Well, she's found someone who's willing to bankroll her. Who? Daniel St. John. <laughs> You're kidding. Oh, I heard him make the offer myself. Thanks, Suzanne. But I don't think Dr. St. John is going to be much of a problem. Oh, sit down. I'm not finished. 
pleased with you. How are you? I had no idea I'd run into you here. You hear the last This is 6 News, assignment editor John O'Connor. 6 News has learned that Rhode Island state officials were warned in a report issued 12 years ago that Ristic...